Thus far, in talking about separation of variables, we've only done one equation. Laplace's equation. It's an important equation to be sure. It comes up all the time in all different kinds of physics, but it's certainly not the only equation. And even taking this equation and writing it in a different coordinate system, like spherical coordinates, would give you a different partial differential equation that you'd still want to try to solve with separation of variables. So in the last video in the unit on partial differential equations, I'm just going to talk about more general equations and how you tell whether an equation is separable or not. And at the end, I'll discuss some of the use of separation of variables in my own work. So this equation separated very nicely when we made the product on sots. t equals x of little x, y of little y. But let's see, let's change it a little bit and see if it still separates. So suppose instead of that we ran into the equation x squared, second derivative with respect to x, plus y cubed, second derivative with respect to y. Well, to find out whether separation of variables works, you just try it. There's nothing more to it than that. So we do the same set of steps we plug in. This says x squared times the second partial derivative of x of x and y of y plus y cubed times the second partial derivative with respect to y of x of x times y of y, then we play the same game. We notice that we can bring the y out, and so we get x squared capital Y times capital X double prime of x, and the same thing over here, y cubed, bring out the x, and we get y double prime of y. Okay, in separation of variables, our goal is always to get one side of the equation just depending on x and another side just depending on y. Let's start by making it an equation. That should have said equals zero, and I'll change this to equals with a minus sign. So now I've got two sides, but how are we going to isolate one side all x and one side all y? Well, I can play the same trick I played last time. If I divide by x times y, then what's going to get canceled on the right is the x, and on the left is the y. And so, oh, looks like it works. I just had x squared capital X double prime over x equals minus y cubed capital Y double prime over y, and now I can make the same argument I made in the other video, that the left-hand side depends only on x, the right-hand side depends only on y, so this is independent of y, but it's also equal to something that's independent of x, so it's actually independent of x and y, so it's actually constant, and likewise for the right-hand side, so both sides are constant. And you have to give the constant a name. In the examples, I picked the name minus k squared because I knew that was going to turn out nicely, but it doesn't always. And since I'm not doing any particular physics problem here, no particular reason to call it anything, so I'll just call it c. And now I've created two. I've taken my single partial differential equation, and I've created two ordinary differential equations, namely x squared capital X double prime equals C capital X and Y cubed capital Y double prime equals minus C capital Y. That gives us like two ordinary differential equations starting from our one partial differential equation. Right, so the equation was a little more complicated than Laplace's equation, but the same series of steps works. But it won't always. So, if for example, 
let's try one more example that probably will work. You might think that, okay, it needs to be x times x derivatives plus y times y derivatives, but that's not quite right. What if I make this xy cubed? We'll just stick an extra x in there. So let's go ahead and dynamically insert that x everywhere. This term is unchanged. This term has um, x in front of it. Then this term is unchanged. This term has an x in front of it. This term is unchanged. This term has an x in front of it. So, let me erase that equals constant. We don't know yet whether it works. It looks like we failed because this side depends only on x, and this side doesn't. It depends on x and y. But there's an easy fix. I just divide by another power of x. I take out this, I take out that, and now the left-hand side is independent of x. It just depends on x. The right-hand side just depends on y. By the general argument, they're both equal to some constant independent of x and y. And then we go up here, and the new differential equation was simply x times x double prime equals cx, and the y differential equation was unchanged. So that equation still separated, even though it looked like x and y were much more mixed up with each other up top. And in general, there's no way to know if the equation separates without just trying it. So that's what you do. If I ask you whether the equation is separable, you just try the method. So let me uh, now do an example where it won't work. If I instead change this to x plus y cubed over here, now we're going to have a problem because I'm going to have x plus y cubed multiplying all of that minus x plus y cubed multiplying all of that minus x plus y cubed multiplying all of that. And now you can see there's really nothing I can do. The left-hand side nicely depends on x. The right-hand side depends on x and y. I can't divide by x plus y cubed because, I mean, yeah, that would make the right-hand side just depend on y. But now I've moved the y cubed to the left-hand side. Uh, it would be down here, and then the left-hand side would have x and y. So in this case, there's nothing I can do. I certainly cannot conclude that both sides are constant because I don't have the argument that both sides only depended on their respective variable. It's just all mixed up. I cannot solve the equations. It is not separable. It doesn't mean there's no solution to these equations. In a more advanced course on partial differential equations, we would talk about conditions for existence of solutions. You don't know that. All you know is that this method didn't work. So when you encounter a new equation in your research or in your classes, the first thing you try is separation of variables. If it works, you're golden. If it doesn't, well, you have to try a lot harder. And in this class, we're going to restrict ourselves to the question, A, does it work? And then if it does, using it to find the solution. So that's a little bit on separation of variables in more general equations. I just want to conclude by mentioning um, some examples of how it comes up in my own research, this is a technique that really just does come up over and over and over again. Uh, just a minute ago, I looked at the last paper I wrote, and you know, sure enough, we use separation of variables. You know, it was in an appendix because this is standard stuff uh, that all researchers know, um, but we needed it. So I thought I'd just take a minute and tell you about the last paper I wrote and how separation of variables arises. The question we were interested in in the paper is how energy gets out of black holes. So if you know anything about black holes, you know that nothing can come out, no information can come out. You can't transmit signals outside, but actually you can get the energy out. And this was discovered by Roger Penrose more than 50 years ago, and then uh, another um, Roger, Roger Blanford, along with Roman Zanayek, uh, discovered a way to make it work in astrophysics, which is called the blanford zanayak mechanism. And we were studying that in this simple configuration where you have a black hole and you have some kind of disk of matter. You should imagine this whole thing is rotated about the vertical axis here, so it's some disk. And we draw sort of magnetic field lines in this simple configuration that you can study analytically. 
which is called the split monopole, if you want to Google around. And Blanford and Zaniak had set up this problem, and they had found an expression for the energy extraction rate, and they found out that it was proportional to the spin of the black hole squared. Some kind of dimensionless spin parameter that um, goes to zero. And then this is a seminal paper in astrophysics. And people tried to get the higher order corrections. They tried to do a Taylor expansion from higher even powers of the spin. And, and they encountered infinities, inconsistencies. They didn't know what to do with it. So what we did in this paper is we resolved that issue. Exactly how we did it is beyond the scope of the lecture. But the point is, there's a partial differential equation you have to solve here. And the partial differential equation you have to solve for the structure of this magnetic field is separable. And we needed all of those product solutions to write down the solution to the next one. So that's just a taste of it, but separation of variables comes up over and over and over again from, you know, the first time you've seen it, which might be this course, all the way to the most advanced, you know, theoretical physics um, in the papers I've written that are related to string theory. I've also used separation of variables. It, it just shows up out.